Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing okay. If you hear some random screams in the background, uh, nobody's getting murdered, uh, nobody's breaking in. My son has like two or three friends, two kids in the house that literally after I have to uh, do this update, I have to take them to uh, basketball practice. So not only do I have to drive my own kids around, apparently I have to drive somebody else's kids around. That is that. So let's talk about the market. What you're looking at right now is Nordstrom. Why is Nordstrom a big deal? Uh, they didn't say anything different than any other company in this last quarter of earnings, right? Soft sales, the economy stinks, inflation's hurting us, everything's hurting us, blah, 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 right? Same thing happened with Zoom last night, right? Zoom came out with earnings uh, last night. They said exactly the same thing. The economy's slowing, blah, 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 right? So why is this different? And, and the whole point is, it's not. They, every single company said exactly the same thing on these earnings uh, for this quarter. The only difference is how the market perceived those uh, perceived those headlines based on sentiment. If you guys remember, when all these companies were coming out with earnings, right? Microsoft missed, App, um, uh, Google missed, uh, Netflix missed, Meta missed, everybody missed, right? If you guys remember, every single company basically under the sun missed, but it didn't make a difference because we were above the 50-day moving average and that was a bullish statement, right? That was a bullish sentiment. And now, right, after the last five, six days worth of rallying, the market got tired, right? The market pulled back two and a half percent last week. The market, you know, couldn't rally today after a 350 point decline yesterday on the NASDAQ and a 600 point decline uh, on the Dow. So what, it's not even what the headline is anymore. It's what basically where the sentiment is anymore. And right now, there's a lot of people turning around and say, well, this is obviously a bear market rally. Obviously, right? Obviously. And again, I've been saying this for weeks. Call it what you want. Potato, potato, tomato, tomato. The fact is the bulls reclaimed the 50-day moving average and went for a month-long run. That's the facts. I don't care how they got there. I don't care what it's called. That's the facts. And now, the last six sessions, you're talking about five from yesterday, uh, five from last week, uh, actually, se uh, session number seven, one from yesterday and one from today, so far, the bulls cannot get their footing back. And the question, again, if you guys remember uh, during uh, the weekend video was, well, was this the top, right? Was this the, in indeed the bear market rally or was this just an orderly retest of what things to come for higher prices for later. And my, my whole, you know, my whole existence is don't guess, right? We don't need to guess. I say this pretty much every single video, let the price action tell us what happened. And what we saw today was pretty, you know, it was pretty loud and clear, right? And the reason why I say that if, if you're a new, if you're a new trader, okay, and the most important part is how the market closes, how much emphasis there is, how much institutional money flow there is, uh, especially in the options market. Today was very, very important for the bulls because again, like we discussed last night in the video, what the bulls really needed today, like really, really desperately needed, was kind of a gap down, kind of wash out around that 310, 311 area. That never happened, okay? In instead, we got the opposite, okay? And we got the gap up and I, I knew right away, there's no way in hell you ever buy a gap up. Uh, and we've been saying this for years and years and years. There's no way you ever buy a gap up after selling because you're gonna be buying stocks into supply. And slowly but surely, you can see what happened with the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Let's just use the diamonds as a proxy, right? You saw the, you know, you saw the Dow literally, here's the 60 minute view, right? You saw the Dow, the market opened up and just went straight down. Even the Qs that tried to rally a couple of times, right? They really did, they tried to rally, they just couldn't do it and the Nasdaq closed on the day. That's not a good thing. When, you, when, you, when you're down uh, six days in a row heading into today's session, and the most important part is start reclaiming levels that you lost, especially this 318 level. The fact that they couldn't do it is it, it can't sit really well uh, with any with any bull going into tomorrow's session. Again, anything that happens in this market, the market is out of its mind. What you think is normal is completely out of the ordinary and vice versa. So nothing really surprises me anymore as far as price action goes. But again, going into tomorrow, it's very, very tough if you're if you're a perma bull to turn around and go, yo, I can't wait for tomorrow. Well, which part can you, can, can you not wait of? Now, yes, 
Are there names for tomorrow you can watch the upside? Of course, and we'll get to that in a second. But if you look at the majority of names that we talked about last night on the video, they're still right at the bottom of the range where they started from last night. The only difference was it was almost like a pregnant pause today instead of a second day violent sell-off, which I really, really wanted, which I really didn't get. But if you look at the charts, you'll kind of see what I'm talking about, right? Look at the cues. The cues held yesterday's low and basically in just teetering. If the bull, you know, again, going sideways after this big move is not a good thing. Okay, they're not resting to go higher. Okay, <laughs> we, we they desperately need to take out the previous day's high, which they couldn't do today. And at the same time, they held the low. So it was a very, very odd day. And when you look at the individual names, right? Some names are just hanging in there, right? They're hanging in. Didn't take out the previous. Didn't take out the previous lows. But hey, didn't take out the previous highs either. Look in the video. They report tomorrow, right? One of the one of the companies that reports tomorrow. You guys remember they got it lower two weeks ago. Everybody knows they're gonna have horrible earnings. It's not gonna be a shock if they report horrible earnings. They told you two weeks ago we're gonna report horrible earnings. That's why they got it lower. Now the question is, well, can the you know can the video be? a byproduct of what technology for the most part has been absorbed for bad news and take the stock higher, or are they actually gonna treat bad news as, well, crazy as it sounds, bad news and take it lower? Again, we shall see, but you can see here, even before, even before t tomorrow's earnings, you can see it's just sitting there on the 50-day moving average. It didn't take out yesterday's lows by a few pennies, but what happens tomorrow, right? What happens if they do confirm the 50-day moving average? Again, nobody's taking this thing uh, into earnings tomorrow night. But is there a trade, right? Is there a trade after, if they start claim, reclaiming back the 50-day moving average to the downside? 100%, right? Look at a name, for example, like Meta today, right? We talked about Meta yesterday. This is day two below the 50-day moving average. This is one of the actual names that actually went lower than yesterday's channel. A name like Square, which I actually lost 50 cents on today, but the funny thing is, look at Square, right? You got Square sitting here with uh, right underneath the 50-day moving average. This thing confirms down. This thing is gonna, you know, this thing is ready to go, right? It's it's really really ready to go. So if you look at today's session, and, and again, I'm, I'm a little I'm a little bit pressed for time, but you know, a lot of the, the moves we had today were just very sneaky channels. It was a nice upside pivot today uh, on Tesla in the early parts of the day. The smaller cap names did really really well today. The Hooses of the world and the KOSs of the world. So it's not, you know, it's not an indication of how the overall market structure was today. But if you look at the big picture, right? Netflix continues to go lower. Um, I really, you know, again, I still think this thing sees 21, 22. If, the, if there's one more pull tomorrow in the market, Coinbase has held, you know, the bottom of the range here now twice. You know, if they if they concerns, if it confirms, uh, I think it has more room to the downside as well. So again, if you are a bull, you're just not getting that warm, fuzzy feeling uh, in going into tomorrow. Are there names that we could watch in tomorrow to the upside? Sure. And again, this is why we always maintain the point. Try to trade from both sides of the market. So for example, a stock like ENVX, right? This thing looks actually looks pretty good, right? I don't know how many guys are familiar with the name, but look at this, you know, look at the stock. It's gotten rejected here at the five-day moving average three separate times. They came for a uh, short-term expiration, right? Short-term expiration of the 2250s. They even went for the 2750s uh, for October yesterday. Tesla, right? Tomorrow after the close is their three for one split. Again, in, for, for my opinion, I don't think there's gonna be any difference for the stock trading at $900 or the stock trading at $300 after the three for one split. You're still gonna have massive institutional money flow. You're still gonna have monster range. Again, at the end of the day, it's still gonna be a $300 stock. It's not gonna be a, a $40 stock, right? You're still gonna have big, big ranges. The only difference is, quote unquote, people care more after the split. Don't ask me why, it's in, it's not an institutional thing, it's a retail thing. Believe me, the institutions don't care, okay? Whether the stock is uh, 1,000, 1,200, 300, 600. If they fall in love with a cult hero, that cult hero is on their books no matter what price there is. So again, again, if you're buying Tesla tomorrow, strictly from the point of it's going to split, it's going higher, well, it's not gonna go higher if the rest of the NASDAQ goes lower. That is a pretty, a pretty important part. However, right, from the technical point of view, Tesla did wake up today and you can make a case, and again, granted, the, the split comes effective tomorrow evening, right? Tomorrow evening. So you have a full session of people fueling other people to say, you gotta get long for the split. You gotta get long for the split. Okay, there were 920s coming in. 
They were not some 950 weeklies coming in. The key is for Tesla. And again, it has nothing to do with the split. But the key is for Tesla. If we can get above this five-day moving average right here. You see it, guys? See this whole little channel here? Remember the last time it got above this whole channel, right? Look, look, just look at muscle memory. This is what we talk about muscle memory, right? You see this candle here at 915? You see this, this area here of supply? Once it confirmed that, it went to highs, right? This is the same, same line, same supply zone. If we can just get above the supply zone, it could open up some airspace, whether it's going to be because a split is coming, a Schmidt is coming, whatever, the, whatever you think is coming. The point this technical analysis needs airspace. And if Tesla can get above that level, it's a very, very big if, then it maybe can't supply a measured potential move ahead of the split. So yes, there's definitely names I'm watching to the upside tomorrow. I will watch Tesla just in case it confirms. I will watch this ENVX just in case it confirms. But at the same time, guys, look how many charts you have to the downside as well. You have Amazon, right? You have Amazon. I still like the square. Netflix looks terrible, right? You got Netflix that looks terrible. Zoom, I think, has another day down tomorrow. Why wouldn't it not, right? If the stock missed earnings and if everything else gets taken down, shouldn't this thing have one more day of selling? So I'm definitely watching Zoom tomorrow uh, for a second day of selling as well. So we're definitely getting some value. And again, it's very, very tough for somebody to turn around and go, well, the bulls rested. It's not the bulls that rested, right? When you have an inside day after a 350 point move to the downside, after six moves off the highs, it's not the bulls that are resting, right? Just really keep that uh, into perspective. So again, guys, I'm sorry about this. Got to cut it short. Got to take these kids to practice. Have a great night. Stay blessed. Stay healthy. And God's help, I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.